Example 27.5. According to a study on ethnic, gender, and acculturation influences on sexual behaviors published in 2008, the average age at the time of first intercourse for Hispanic females was 16.52 years old, with a standard deviation of 2.25 years. Based on these numbers, would it be unusual for a Hispanic woman to have waited until turning 21 years old before engaging in intercourse? The thing that pops out at me in this problem is this phrase here, would it be unusual? Whenever you're asked that question, if something is unusual, you want to start to think about the z-score because the z-score gives us a way to assess if something is unusual or not. I'm going to show you that scale that was in our notes from the page prior to where this problem is located you'll see that we had this scale that basically gave us a guideline for assessing when something was unusual or not. So let's read what it says here at the bottom. It says, note any z-score that has an absolute value greater than three is considered an outlier, right? An outlier would mean that it's unusual. And then it says, while z-scores between two and three are possible outliers. Notice that's absolute value, right? So negative two would also be, negative three would also be considered possible outliers. Also, whenever a value is less than the mean, its z-score is negative. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this little scale here to try to figure out if the data that's provided here makes, would make a woman who waited till 21 years old um, unusual. So let's figure that out by calculating the z-score for that scenario. All right, so let's copy what the problem gives us in terms of numbers. It says that the average age at the time of first in intercourse was 16.52 years, so the mean is 16.52 with a standard deviation of 2.25 2.25 then from there there's one other number they say that if a woman waited for 20 until 21 years old which should be unusual that's going to be the person's like you know uh, x value for the problem because that's the number we're interested in figuring out um, if it's unusual or not. So we're going to try to convert 21 into a z-score and say, would that be an unusual value? In other words, would this be an unusually long time to wait? Okay, so let's put the z-score formula up. It's x minus the mean over sigma, right? x minus the mean over sigma. In this particular problem, the x value is 21. The mean is 16.52. We're going to divide that by 2.25. All right, so let's pop that in the calculator and see what it gives us. Using the calculator and doing it all at once, we'll use a parenthesis for the top. We'll do 21 minus 16.52. We'll close up that parenthesis and we'll divide by the standard deviation of 2.25. When we're finished, we get 1.9911111. So 1.99 basically, right? So the z-score is equal to 1.99. So it is right on the cusp of being unusual, right? 1.99 on this scale is just before the two where we start to call things unusual. Now the scale progressively gets darker. If you saw it in color like it is in the notes, it gets progressively darker, which means that the further you get out here, the more unusual something is. So the fact that it's right on the line close to two, we would not consider it unusual yet. Because even two is only, you know, borderline unusual. As we move further down the line, it gets more and more unusual, and it's very clear to say that something is, say, like four, a z-score of four or five would be clearly unusual. Something that's three is unusual. But, you know, depending on the distribution of the data, you know, something that's only two standard deviations isn't necessarily highly unusual. So 1.99 will still classify as being ordinary. Um, obviously it's, it's, you know, indicating because it is large that, you know, this number is kind of long compared to this number, right? The average being only 16.52 or about 16 and a half years old. Somebody who waits to 21 has certainly waited a long time, but it's not an unusually long time, right? So that's the message of the problem essentially. And what's great about the z-score is that it can answer questions like this for things that we don't even know much about, right? We don't necessarily know what's typical in the population of, of women, but you know, when we see these mean, this mean and the standard deviation given to us, we're able to use the z-score to come up with an answer to that question, is it unusual? And that's actually really nice. You know, you know if we're talking about the weights of elephants, again, using a z-score, if I know nothing about elephants, using a z-score calculation, as long as I know the mean and the standard deviation, I can tell you if an, un an elephant is unusually heavy or unusually light, you know, etc.
So it's a great procedure and you want to remember anytime a problem asks you if something is unusual to try to apply that approach.